trust, one of the most important assets on the internet. So what would we be without trust in the internet? Just imagine there is a web shop. How can you trust that it's trustworthy? How can you believe in what they're saying? There's someone who is sending you an email. How do you know it's a guy who he says he is who is sending this email? That's all about trust. And if we look back into 2011, what have we seen? Some of the certificate authorities, the trust was broken by faults, by failures. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Is trust a real problem in the internet and how we can overcome this problem? And I'm glad you're here this afternoon where on FOSTEM there are so many interesting uh, talks and I'm glad the room is over full. So there's one, still one seat here if someone of you wants to sit. No? Okay. So anyway, I will start. I will start with introducing myself a bit because uh, actually it's always good to know who is speaking. And um, that's me, I'm Benedict Teintel, you have seen it on the first page. Um, actually, I studied business administration and computer science on Darmstadt University of Technology in Germany. And um, I graduated uh, last year, I had a major IT security and cryptography. So actually, it's all combined uh, in this topic I'm talking about today. Um, I actually, right now I'm working as a consultant for a, um, for a European company, actually it's a French company. Uh, with branches all over Europe and um, my major topic I'm working, my day-to-day -day work is uh, all about IT governance, IT security, trust, data privacy, everything that has to do and just related to the things I'm talking uh, to about. So if you have any question during the talk, uh, please uh, shift it to the end because I hope I can uh, answer the most questions up front but if there are any I uh, put in a Q&A in the end. Right now, what are we going to talk to about today? Today I want to um, address three topics. Actually, I want to give you some insight into PKI, into public key infrastructure, and into CA basics, means a certificate authority basics. So it's just a broad overview, because I don't know what your knowledge uh, about these topics right now, so I want to bring you all on the same level to see, okay, what's the problem with trust. After that, I will talk about the 2011 cases um, where DigiNotar, DigiCert and Komodo uh, failed and this was a really big failure and I will talk about this afterwards. And lastly I will talk about CA search because well, on, the first, uh, on the one hand I'm standing here for CA cert, holding this talk and speech for CA cert, and on the other hand I want to show that there is an open alternative that is working different from uh, those commercial CAs uh, we're talking about today too. So let's start. Let's start with the PKA by basics. Actually, public key infrastructure is always consisting of two parts. You have a public key and you have a private key. So to each public key there is one private key magic. The one who holds a secret the secret, the private key, is the one who can uh, encrypt, uh, de sorry, can decrypt um, everything that is sent. And the one, and the public key is, and that's the name of it, it's published. So it is public and everyone can use it to uh, encrypt messages and send it to the one who holds the private key. So it means you have something you want to say, send in secret from uh, Bob to Alice. Let's uh, let's introduce them right now. So Bob and Alice are there. Bob holds a private key of um, no. Alice holds a private key. I'm sorry. And Bob has a, a public key of Alice, so she can send Bob an encrypted message by using her private uh, her public key to encrypt the message and uh, send it to her. And she can uh, decrypt it by using um, her own private key. So actually that is the basic and I won't uh, go deeper inside because um, that's everything you need to know and um, I, I hope, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> if you laugh, you can, is it not everything you need to know about PK? 
All right. <laughs> All right. So the second thing is so we should know about is what is the CA, the Certificate Authority. The Certificate Authority actually um, consists of three major parts. So you have uh, the Registration Authority, the Certificate Authority, and the Repository. Someone, in our case it's Alice, is a subscriber. She has a, holds a certificate, she subscribed at the Registration Authority. The Registration Authority is a legal unit that um, collects the data of Alice or any other subscriber and um, processes it to get a certificate. The Certificate Authority itself publishes the certificate consisting or um, signing uh, the keys given and um, the keys and stores the public key of Alice in a repository also as CLS. CLS um, are the revocation, uh, certificate revocation, uh, CR, CRLs, the certificate revocation lists, um, where every certificate that is revocated, uh, it's still stored inside. So and there's a relying party on every uh, thing, that's Bob in our case. Bob wants to know, is the key of uh, Alice still valid? And is, uh, and is it Alice who, is, uh, who does the key belong to? So Bob is going to check it from the repository, gets the key, gets it as well, still valid, and can use it to sign to the subscriber. What is the most important part of, um, of what we're talking about today? It's not about the subscriber, it's not the relying party or the repository. These are the registration authority and the certificate authority. <coughs> These are the main parts of the CA and those assets need to be protected to validate and to keep the trust. How is it built? Actually, on the top, it's a hierarchical CA. That means on the top you have a root CA. This is a root key stored from, uh, from the certificate authority. And the root key is the most, uh, most worthy effort the CA owns. From this one, sub-CAs, here we have two, are issued and assigned with the key of the root CA. Them can sign the user certificates like here Alice, Bob and up to E, I was just uh, looking up for some names, so <laughs> um, don't blame me on them. Uh, actually, the root CA could um, give uh, certificates for all of them uh, directly, but normally there are sub CAs for different uh, cases, so we do it in a hierarchical, wa hierarchical way. And if someone wants to check if Alice certificate is right, he has to check the whole chain starting from Alice certificate signed by the sub CA, signed by the root CA, because the only trust and the trust anchor is the root CA. Now we're getting in a problem, I think, because you know there is not only one CA, there are hundreds of uh, CAs outside there and uh, you need to trust each of the CAs. And this is, uh, there are a lot of um, ways uh, how this could be implemented. I brought to you two uh, here and I have another one uh, in my head right now. This is cross-certified CAs. This means if there is one CA here, our root CA again, and there is a Fox CA, a second CA, they certify each other, so they have a cross certification. That means if someone who is relying on Fox CA checks the certificate of Alice, is also relying on root CA because they cross certified each other. The second approach here is a bridged CA. A bridged CA means both CAs are independent. And on top of it, or between them, there's another CA where, um, where both CAs are relying to. And actually, this is an enlargement of uh, the, um, the hierarchical CA. So it means you have an additional um, entity inside you're not directly relying to, but uh, it is bridging one CA to the other. and um, this is bringing um, <coughs> additional value because just imagine 
two CAs, they're cross certified. But there are not two CAs outside. I said there are hundreds or thousands outside. And if each of them would cross certify with each other, you have. Uh, I could say mathematically, we, we, we try to get it, but I don't want to back you with this. There are. Uh, thousands, millions of uh, connections between them because uh, of the cross certification. That's the reason why a bridged CA was uh, uh, established as one of the points because every CA is just trusting in the bridged CA and not trusting in each other CA because it doesn't need to. So, what we have and what all of you might know is the browsers, the operating systems, they all shift default CAs. And Actually, they they take away the decision if you trust the CA and if you trust the trust anchor or not. They're shifting it away from you to them. They say, we told, tell you, you uh, trust root CA by default because we say it's so. And that's actually a problem that got back to them um, on 2011. Because what happened on 2011? And now that's the point. You might have seen one of those, uh, or all of those um, headlines on the net, and those are just some of them. It happened to, you see, um, we have Komodo here, we have uh, DigiCert over there, we have DigiNota. Uh, DigiNota was, I think, uh, the biggest case, actually. Um, what happened to them? They have been in the browsers. That means you trusted them by default, and then there was uh, different cases why uh, hackers attacked them, and they got inside the systems. Um, sub CAs like uh, at uh, DigiCert, sub DigiCert is only a sub CA of a different CA. Um, they did not establish policies like the, like the root CA and you still trusted them because you trusted the root CA. So what happened to them? They, got, they, they had a data break, they had a fraud inside. And it happened because you trusted them by default and you saw um, Firefox, you saw Chrome, you saw Chromium, they all shifted a patch to get them out of the registration, um, of the authority registration. So is trust the root of all evil? Now we're back to the topic. I just got some points why those CAs failed. And I'm not sure if this is all, but I think we have a big problem right now. We still have a big problem because browsers still trust these CAs. One of the main problems I want to address at this point is the basic verification of the subscriber. <coughs> Has every one of you ever uh, tried to get a certificate from uh, one of the commercial CAs? How easy was it? Um. <laughs> no, it's not about the money you paid. <laughs> um, there are two levels. There's the domain validation where you just get validated on your domain name, for example. And exactly. And then there is the uh, higher form of validation where you actually check the papers of your company you be sending papers from the Chamber of Commerce saying that you are signatory uh, from your company that you are allowed to ask it. And then you have even higher one with uh, EV SSL where they are some even more trust. All right. And, uh, so I just... So, so I just the, the lowest yeah. form is very easy and the rest is very hard. All right. I, I don't agree on you. The lowest form you write is very easy. The lowest form is just... You send uh, um, an information about that you own the uh, domain name, so it's like an email address. You, um, it's verified on the email address that you own the domain name, and then you get a certificate. You pay for it, of course. <laughs> the second level, um, the higher level, is you send documents, but they cannot verify that the person who sent the documents is a person who says he is. And that's the actual problem with them. That's a basic, basic verification of the subscriber that fails. Yeah, and that's not entirely true. Mm -hmm. I had a passport check where somebody came to my door. All right. And this face to face check, I was the guy on the passport. All right. Mm -hmm. that, that's uh, <coughs> average, of course. Yeah. But I don't know it from all the CAs. So I didn't set 
all CAs do it, but okay, that's good to know that there are CAs who do a face-to-face -face check because actually you pay a lot of money for it, so they should do it. That's right. Um, the other point is, uh, and um, that's a big problem or big issue too, is reselling of CA services. This means there's a big CA like Komodo who is reselling um, uh, their services to smaller CAs, but those CAs are not following the same rules and the same quality <coughs> as Komodo. And this is uh, what happened to DB, uh, DB Cert. DB Cert uh, was, I think it's Komodo, uh, it's the main CA, CA but uh, don't uh, put me on this <coughs> too hard. Um, and Komodo has stricter rules and policies than uh, DB Cert had. So um, <coughs> DB Cert got, uh, got this fraud. And uh, so there was a question, can't we trust Komodo anymore too? It's a big issue. Uh, anyway, uh, some things we don't know about is uh, wikis. Do we know if there are wikis used? We don't know. And uh, server intrusions. Do we know if, uh, if the root keys are protected, well protected? It's all about communications, and we don't know if the communication is as good as, uh, as we're expecting it from a company we're given our money to. So these are reasons why commercial CAs fails. Um, or fail, and I say it again, they're still in the browsers, you still trust them by default. So what are the lessons learned from what I'm just talking about? It's what needs to be done in future, what should commercial CAs do, and uh, what is the alternative to that? Of course, open policies, open governance is, is a very big topic and it's a very big issue that should be done not only um, by CAs, but in the politics too, and um, in the open source community. And from open source communities, you might know it, open governance is one of the main topics uh, and it's it's mostly, uh, they're mostly more open um, to everything than commercial uh, commercial companies. Transparent processes. You need to know what is happening on every step. You need to know um, are the processes documented and are, are, are them followed. IT security and data protection. Do you always know if your data is secured? Do you always know if uh, the certs are safe? And, and how the root keys are saved. And, of course, we talked about it, exact identity check. So, what we can offer from CA CERT is an open policy, an open governance um, CA that has uh, that had built in those rules and those ideas from the lessons we learned. So this is the question I'm asking, how about CA CERT? And I try to say, what is our approach on registration authority? And what is our approach on certificate authority? First of all, registration authority. Our registration authority follows policies. And each of you, everyone, can just check our website. The policies are open for everyone. You can even work with us on the policies. You can discuss with us on the policies. And we are open for input. So. If you find anything where you say, all right, dudes, that's not great, or do, don't we need to change this? Come to us, send us an email, we will talk about it. The second thing, I think, is identification checks. We check your ID card, and that's what we're doing here um, in our, um, on our stand in the building K, um, on the ground floor there. We check uh, your identities, and you'll need at least two assurers to get your identity checked and to get uh, the, the validation that you are the one you state to be. Why to assure us? Or at least to assure us. This is the reason not that we don't trust each other, but we are human. And we might do mistakes, or we might get bribed, or we might um, want, to, uh, <coughs> want to do this failure. Okay, we don't know. Is the other one really reliable or not? And this is all about our trust. And our trust model, we say, OK, um, you need at least two. Why do I say at least? Because if you're a young assurer, if you're a new assurer, 
you can only issue a small amount of points and at least you need 50 <coughs> points to get a certificate with your name in it. So this means if you're young, uh, you're more likely, or it doesn't mean young, if you're a new assurer, um, you're more likely to do mistakes. And to avoid this, we, uh, we say, okay, you can issue less points. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're growing with it, and if you're getting major in your assurances, you can issue more points. So it makes it uh, makes the process. Uh, actually, there, there are two points. One is uh, um, it makes it more easy to get more points to get a senior assurer. But on the other hand, it it makes it a bit fun, uh, like hunting for points. And this is uh, how we get the community inside again. And the last point is arbitration. That means we have our own arbitrational system. Um, for each of you who has a complaint, can just come back to us and we check it, and we can speak a ruling about it. So, how about our CA, our Certificate Authority? On everything we do, we have a two-man rule. It means the keys, the root keys, the root key ceremony has to be done um, even by two men. Even uh, the server um, maintenance has to be do, done by two. One is always supervising the others. Uh, one cannot even uh, do something without the others. We have open source code. Everything where um, our signers, our, um, our whole system is open source. It's documented open source. It's open for you to participate in it. And before we deploy our code, we test it and we do code re reviews. So we guarantee uh, we guarantee that uh, every code, piece of code that comes into our systems is to be reviewed at least uh, once. And uh, we try to avoid getting frauds in our systems um, by malicious coding. And we have audit logs. Audit logs for a certification creation means we, we have always a possibility to check what happened at what time and these logs are not changeable from the outside, just from the uh, certificate authority itself. Coming to the main question <coughs> almost everyone is asking us, when does CA cert get into the browsers? That's a good question. I cannot answer it, not now. <coughs> but we need to get, gain trust. And there are two possibilities to get into the browsers, I always say. It's spending a lot of money or getting an audit done, what still costs a lot of money, and uh, what has a lot to do with spending manpower. So if someone of you wants to um, work in a certificate authority, wants to work with a team uh, who is highly into this topic, you're always welcome. Uh, just visit us on our booth. And uh, even if I cannot say when we are in the browsers, I can tell you we're working on it. And we're really working harder on it than we ever did. So um, you're welcome to participate. In the end, tomorrow at 12 o'clock at Farrah, we have our C cert signing party. This means <coughs> if you want to become part of our community, if you want to have free certificates, if you want to challenge us with questions, come there or come uh, at our booth at uh, the cable. Thank you for this and I'm open for your questions. You said, you, you said it's not possible that one person alone can create or sign certificates, like for example a new intermediate certificate. Right? That's right. So how do you how do you make that? How do you assure that, that no person alone can do that? Uh, this is uh, issue, this is covered by a policy too. You can read it. Um, I don't have the whole policy in mind, um, but I, at least you have to be supervised. That means if a new sub CA is issued, uh, someone needs to, su uh, to supervise it and write down all the steps. We have a we have a, a checklist what needs to be done and we follow this checklist and every uh, thing not done uh, on this checklist must be written down so this is how we ensure it. So how are you sure you cannot be hacked like this in order?
we cannot be sure that we can cannot be hacked like DigiNotar. But what we can be sure of is uh, that we have mechanisms to revoke the certificates faster than um, DigiNotar did it. And we have the mechanisms and the policies to, um, to inform the people faster than DigiNotar did it. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you didn't mention how do you get into browsers. So there is the CA browser forum. What is your take on this, body? How do we get in the browser? Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I'm not. Do you guys interact with the CA browser forum? Yes, we do. Okay. Oh, it's sure. the CA browser forum. Yeah, we do. Okay. But the CA browser forum actually is is just one part. Um, it's just a network of CA um, of certificate authorities. So um, there is much more than just them. So um, there are open standards. Um, we try to establish, and uh, the CAB, the CA's uh, browser um, forum, um, the CA forum, sorry, uh, still um, has a bit different ruling than, um, or gave themselves a bit different ruling that is more for commercial CAs and is not one to one uh, applicable on our system. So, so, I mean, I, I work for the WE3C. I know we have five high tech and audience. And, I mean, given that the CA system has spectacularly fallen apart over the last two years, really obvious way. And while I appreciate the work the CA starts doing, I do think it would be interest for many of the browsers that are in WebPIM, Zillar, Open Source, and also Microsoft in fixing this. If it was actually a, 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 a good technical solution that could prevent this sort of giant single tax service, the CA. System currently has, but then there's a large amount of companies who are not in the business, to be honest. And there's also, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard technical issue. There's no consensus. So, I mean, I, I appreciate the work, but the, the entire system is clearly flawed. So, I, I would invite people to, to actually discuss this further. I know the IETF will be having a bar bomb on this in the summer. And I would appreciate if people came to that. It'll be on the IETF website. And that we do need, I mean, this, this entire system has to be fixed shortly, otherwise. The web is undermined. And CA CAsert doesn't fix it. You guys have an interesting system, but it does, you know, it's still the entire system. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's true, of course. There, there's, there are problems we cannot fix, yeah, definitely. Exactly. And that's the problem of the community as a whole. But thank you for your uh, information about this. I have a question. When you say the system needs to be fixed, are you strictly talking about browser system because this certification system is is broader than just going to the web page, right? Yeah, it's, I mean it's a WC three literally only concerned about the web, which is fine. We are mo we, we we are mostly concerned with the client facing web, so the IAP has to be the same say browser form for natural placement or actual certificate for it. We don't touch it. We would we probably would not touch it. Um, at the same point by saying entire just the perfect talking about the fact that you, know, you can undermine a single K and do anything you want. That's the problem. Right? It's, a tax, it's an attack stuff. And, that, and then the revocation is a mess. Right? So that's obvious. The revo yeah, the revocation system, uh, it's, a, it's a main problem. But it's you should. Really bad problem. So there's no clear solution. You, you should, you should uh, discard it uh, in private, please. <laughs> yep. And the uh, discussion now uh, concentrates on browsers. Not only browsers that we use certificates for. We That's also, right. We also what use it for file. Um, uh, the discussion concentrates on browsers, but the certificate issue is not only uh, browser related. I am working for ING Bank now, and we are in the business of uh, transmission of files between banks and other organizations. And all those transmissions also are uh, encrypted by using certificates. So it's a far broader issue than only. The, the browsers and the web. Definitely, it is. But the front and the client actually <coughs> mostly just sees uh, the part of the, um, the browsers yeah. and the part of the uh, email encryption. Yeah. That are the two parts that are very common and very uh, broadly seen. But you're right, definitely there are, um, there are other software systems using uh, certificates for encrypting uh, and decrypting software as uh, messages, sorry. And, um, but that is an issue as a whole. Because the industry and the big banks and the other organizations that really rely on software and computing are uh, gradually shifting from the, the paradigm 
that it can only be trusted if it's uh, a boss and if it's uh, done by a party that can be held accountable for whatever, uh, they are not uh, there, uh, have not arrived at the point that they understand that, uh, for instance, open source uh, uh, certificates generated by its case are, are reliable as well. So it's, it's, uh, this is a development in this industry. Uh, I think there is I one of our CA ah. third guys who wants to answer it. I know that in, at least in Germany, um, <coughs> some bank um, features are already done with CA third uh, certificates okay. in the in the background, not to the front end to the customer, but on the back side. Then I know uh, for, for sure that is um, done quite often with CA third um, certificates. And which bank is that? Okay. Mainly also run to um, Bundesbank. Okay. Because I know, for instance, that the, the Rabobank in the Netherlands is uh, heavily relying on uh, Red Hat Linux already, where, uh, whereas other, other banks uh, stick, uh, stick to some or uh, AI. Uh, in general, uh, they just stick to Oracle and the, the mainstream uh, big commercial. Products. That's a very interesting uh, thing. Yeah, thank you for your contribution. Actually, um, getting this this information, I, I want to pack it a bit. Other banks, there was uh, the um, there was the comment. Other banks are already using, uh, like Rabobank, already using Linux um, on their desktops and on the, on, the uh, on the service systems. Yeah, on the service systems, mm -hmm. and I think most companies are using Linux on the service systems. Uh, so, um, what we offer too from CSA, I've sort, I, I know it's a bit about advertisement, but. I, th I hope it's the right uh, group to, to talk about. It's uh, the organization assurance. That means that a whole organization can set its own um, it all, its, its own CA service offered by CA cert. So if you're interested in this, please uh, just talk to us and we can offer it to you too. I have a, uh, a question. You just said a sure. few slides ago that uh, it's a problem that CAs outsource their activities and sub-CAs, and yet at the same time, no, we're same not thing. outsourcing our no, we're not, not outsourcing, outsourcing it to a sub-CA. So, what we're doing is we're not issuing a sub-CA where what the, where the company can do whatever it wants to. It's still in our hand. So what we just do is um, we uh, we make it more easy for the company to issue a large amount of uh, of certificates. Mm -hmm. Okay, some kind of API or something like that. So, uh, no, it's, it's not, not an API. What, we, what we're doing is we're just um, putting the registration authority in the hand of the company, but we're never outsourcing our CA system. <coughs> it's only the RA system that's outsourced to the company. So it means um, the proof and the liability for the registration lies at the organization, uh, at the organization admin, and the organization administrator is an assurer himself, so he agrees on the policies that we gave. <laughs> so that means he's he's in the same status as one of, of as every other or of our assurers. So there's no difference; still the same policy. All right. Okay. Does that mean that you and only you? Hold all the private keys for all the intermediate certs in your hierarchy. CA cert does hold all the keys for the root and the um, sub-CAs. All of them? All of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what does it take to get into a web browser? Money. <laughs> yeah, just ask me. Only it's, it's only a matter of money or resources. something else? All right. Okay. How do we get into the web browsers? Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's a question we're asking ourselves all the time. No, <laughs> actually, we know what needs to be done. Uh, what what we need to do, and this is where we need um, money for, and where, what we need for human resources, manpower for, is um, we need to get our software system um, through an audit, and we need to check our system against. Uh, the criteria of the audit, um, and that's important. That uh, and we don't want to fail, right? So we want to we want to pass it more at the first time. So we really want to to check every every piece of the system and correct if there are any errors inside or faults inside. And so that's w w I say it again. Uh, we need you if you want to volunteer and help us in uh, getting CA cert into the bronze. Why don't you move where the movement is? 
because the movement is already at the Golden Spark. So why, why don't you start from there? We're trying to get in contact with them. Yeah. Uh, because these are all these things that are done on the lower level, not on the high yeah. levels. Okay. So uh, that's the reason getting... Okay, but a low level is also... We, 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 we are always working on it. Ah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're right. There, there's a second way to get into the browsers. It's about, uh, it's about the mass. So the more people, the more companies use our certificate, the higher is the pressure on the browsers to, get us, uh, to let us in. So you're definitely right. But still the audit needs to be passed. Okay. <laughs> Any more questions? Oh yeah. So I don't know if this is, um, Could you please, please speak a bit louder? I don't know if this is something that um, CA Cert uh, is um, working on or involved in, but it, um, it seems to me as though, as though one of the big problems of the CA model is that a particular server presents a certificate from one CA. So you you can't use uh, you can't offer a CA cert certificate on your server unless you believe all your users will accept it, and you don't have the pressure to have browsers ship your CA because no one's using it on their servers because their users of browsers won't accept it. And then once you are in the browsers, they can't they effectively can't revoke the CA because. There isn't for every server that's using that CA. There is no alternative. All right. So it looks it looks like you you're proposing an idea how to get into the browsers. Is it um, by by the by 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 grassroots <coughs> movement? So it means like everyone needs to trust in websites. No, I'm, I'm saying that um, if if it was possible for a server to present here is my public key signed yep. by CA cert yep. and sign or whatever. Cross signing. Wait, um, you mean redundancy, having two certificates mm -hmm. automatically or on the server? Yes. So, as long as the client trusts <coughs> one of those CAs, yeah, they will consider it valid. Just for information, I think, just before the talk, if you also gave the talk online, I was live online, and as part of that talk, I also made that claim that we should introduce redundancies to that CA world because that would allow us to actually revoke one of the CAs even if it's too big to fail, which is currently the issue, that you cannot revoke one of the larger CAs without breaking a lot of them. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I fully agree with you that introducing redundancy would be good. And one proposal could be to, um, to, to change the Apple LT left protocol with an additional handshake and say, okay, if, if, if the client didn't like the first certificate, you could say so in the TLS handshake and request the backup certificate. Yeah. But this is not yet designed. This like is that. work that must be done in, in the future. If, if, if people agree to that, I would agree to this. So we should get it done. All right. Thanks for this comment on this. All right. Any more questions? Uh, you run a c custom written software? Or do we run custom? Uh, what do you use the certification authority software? Oh, uh, I need to give it to Oli. Oh, what uh, kind? Yeah, it's it's all, it's all written in uh, 2003 by Juan. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a custom written software. Custom all okay, custom written is it software. available on some kind of repository and everything? Yeah, it is definitely. It is open source. Everything is open source. Uh, all our systems. So uh, you can check it on our website. It's not CSR centric <coughs> in terms that you can deploy it uh, as certification authority for. You could uh, so uh, you could deploy it as your own certification authority, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, visit our <coughs> website and uh, search for it. I, I don't have it about uh, uh, about CSR. You find it in about CSR. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. There was one more question over there. Yeah. In the middle. A couple of questions. First oh. Is, um, so you're using open source software, but I guess you're using a commercial ASSM, right? Hardware security module? <coughs> License? Hardware security module? HSM? Where do you store your private keys? You the question is, is your, is your private key protected inside a hardware security device so no one can copy right. your privacy? Right. Is that your question? That's, that's my, well, that, I assumed it was. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> All right, right now it's stored in software, but we're going to, um, or we're planning to move it into hardware cryptographic uh, uh, devices. Okay. 
there is a planning right now. We know now it's in software. It's uh, it's less safe than how to, to keep it in uh, hardware. Um, but the signer itself, so the, the machine who is signing the keys, is not attached to the internet. At least the root uh, root server is not attached to the internet. If it's not really necessary. Well, that, that, the, the, using hardware encryption protects you against an insider attack, which kind of goes back to someone else's question That's about right, how yeah. do you know you're not being hacked. Now, you don't know. You can hope. How, how can you hack a software system that's not, that you can only reach physically, not via the net? You can reach it physically. No, it cannot be reached. No, it can it's only. In space. Not, it's not possible <laughs> to, to enter the place. <laughs> yes, but sir, how do you, how do you, um, you have to sign your certification is that four hours. How can you do that if it's not attached to uh, we're talking about the root yes, keys. The root, the root keys is not. The certification is every four hours. It's updated every four hours. Don't know why. Let's do so. So you have to sign every that, four hours that, that's on what, the web. That's what I said. It's only connected to the net if it's really necessary. It's a local network. It's a local network. It's shifted. So okay. it, it's not directly connected to the internet. Definitely not. You're right, there is a problem, we know about it. Okay. You have to go, yeah. <laughs> you have to go through the network to find it, okay? <laughs> so my, my next question no, is about there is um, no network. trans... There is no network oh, sorry? Connection. There's no network connection? No. I'm not a critical system admin, so I don't know about it. No. It's going uh, via serial line, serial. so it means it's not serial. In, the, right. in the usual network. You cannot simply access. Also, you cannot enter uh, simply the room or get connected, uh, get physically there. It's not possible. You need a number of uh, guys. You need a number of, of uh, entering systems to get actually even physically there. Okay. So no one has the key to get to that box by themselves. It's not possible right, by a single person to enter. Point. Okay. Always two man policy and okay. It's so a serial line, so it was well, just okay. one directional. Um, All right. The second question is how how transparent are your operations? Do you do you publish a log of every time someone requests a certificate and things like that? Do we publish a log? <coughs> we don't publish the audit log. So we? It's okay. Yeah, uh, in the policies there are definitions uh, that every um, uh, identified um, um, external access. Uh, um, a break uh, has uh, to be uh, reported uh, to the executive and uh, brought into arbitration. So, uh, at a, a short time. Otherwise, uh, the critical admins and access engineers are uh, uh, violating policies. I guess yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering about the policy, the, the, the possibility for. <coughs> Anyone on the internet to do an audit? Of what's going on with them? If that's, if that's in any way possible. Right now, that would increase the, the trust. We don't have to trust some third-party auditor to audit. If someone is issuing third-party certificates, then that would increase. The what about privacy? I wouldn't want. Everybody on the I internet think that, that that's a, that's a valid point. What about privacy? So well, that was yeah. my next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. if, if, if you if you issue if you issue the audit log, so this means a log where every operation of the signer is stored. Um, how can you ensure privacy? And I think this is a problem. What we do is every arbit arbitration case that's ruled by us is published openly. The only thing you cannot see is names and email addresses. Everything else is published openly, so you you can browse our wiki, and every arbitration case we ever did is um, stored there. Yeah, I, I guess we're going a bit into policy discussions, but yeah, the process of establishing identity is by nature non-private. Asking someone else to declare that you are a person, and they're declaring it somehow. So, well, how do others see it? I, I don't know. I don't know. I assume other CAs. Okay, actually, this is a valid point. I'd like to shift this discussion to, to our booth. Just visit us and we can talk about it. I can give right? you an example. For example, the certification center in Estonia, who runs the National Bank, actually does have a public uh, secure hash load. 
So it is possible, technically. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we should talk about it, and we can we can make us more transparent. You want it. So actually, I'm over time. Uh, I would say thank you first, and we can discuss later because this was the last talk. So who wants to stay can stay. And uh, just our information, visit us at uh, Ah, okay. Come on, dear.